In this video, I'm gonna show you how simple it is to use one of these to catch a load of these. And this is a video that you're gonna to wanna to check out ready for the winter. Now, welcome back to the New Fish channel and welcome to the absolutely fantastic Boddington Reservoir. Now, this is a fantastic autumn slash winter venue and it's a great place to give this a good chuck out and catch some lovely carp. This feeder has taken the match world by storm over the last 10, 12 years since it's been out. When it gets to sort of October time, right the way through to March and you're fishing for odd fish, that is when this feeder comes to the fore. The method feeder is fantastic throughout the summer when you've been aggressive, you're casting in a lot, but when you're chucking it out, leaving it out for a little while and waiting for a big carp to come along, there's nothing can beat this style of feeder. The reason is it protects your bait superbly well. When you cast it in, it gets to the bottom, it breaks up and contains your bait in a lovely little mouthful, ready for Mr. Carp to come along and take it. And in this video, I'm gonna show you all the little intricacies that you need to know to give this feeder a try. I'm gonna show you how to set it up, what feeder you need, how to mold it, what baits to use, all those little details that might be playing on your mind and stopping you from giving this awesome tactic a try. When it comes to autumn and winter fishing, you're hard pushed to beat one of these when it comes to winkling out a few carp. So this is the feeder that we're using today. It's like the, I'm using the Banjo, but the Guru Hybrid, which is the original design for this feeder, is just as good. I just prefer this system because I'm lazy and I can use the inline stem and change the feeders around. So that's my personal preference um, but the Guru Hybrid is, is every bit as good as this um, and it was like I say the original design so this style of feeder is like an open feeder it's got no bars in it like maybe you've seen a method feeder that's got the bars in it to like compress your bait around this doesn't have that it's just an open bowl if you like and which you put your pellets inside now the setup they come in loads of different sizes and weights I've got big ones and little ones and there's even smaller ones than that but for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use the large. Now, when you buy it in the shop, you'll get the feeder, just like that, on a stem. Uh, you won't have the bead or anything, so you'll need to buy some of them, but you'll have that, that's what you'll get. The beauty of this system, this ICS system, is that you can take the feeder off. The feeders have got a groove in the back, uh, in the back there, which allows that tail rubber to come off. The feeder, the line goes through that groove, and then you can pop that stem on there, put the tail rubber down and you, you've got a feeder on the line ready to go. And the beauty of that is you could put a method feeder on there, you could put a bomb on there, you could put all sorts of different feeders that they do. So you've got one setup that covers a lot of different options. So it's a really good system, but because we're covering this today, that's what we're gone for. But if you've only got one rod, this system's fantastic because like I say, you could use it for bomb fishing, you can use it for method feeder fishing, you can use it for your banjo fishing. So it's a really good system. Now, quite simply, when you get it in the shop, take the feeder off and then you're left with the stem. Now thread your line through it, tail rubber first, then your stem, and then you come down to the termination end where we're gonna attach our hook length. Now, this is a quick change bead. Now all I do, I pass the line through the quick change bead. I then pass my main line through this little hook where I'm gonna attach my hook length and I then tie it in a little loop. That is then passed over that knot to which I can then attach my hook length. All you need is a four inch hook length and that is looped over that little hook and then secured in position like so. And then we'll pull that sleeve over the top and it is ready to go just like that. So then all we need to do is bring that down onto the bead, get our feeder, and pass it through that slot and then bring it down like so. And then the final step is to bring the tail rubber down. And there, that is the setup. That is as simple as it is. That's ready to go. All we'd need to do now is get some pellets in that, fresh hook bait on it, cast it out, and you're gonna catch fish. It's a brilliant setup and it's no wonder why so many anglers like it. It's simple to use, it's easy, and it's very effective. Bait for this style of fishing is really simple and all you need are pellets. Now, what you're looking for are two mil carp pellets. Now to prepare these, all you need to do is put the dry pellets into a sealed Tupperware tub, then level fill them with water, put the lid on, whack them in the fridge and they'll be perfect like this, good to go the next day. 
But what two mil pellets are you going to choose? Well, when you go into a tackle shop, there's all different kinds. There's sticky pellets, there's flavoured pellets, there's coloured pellets, you name it. But to keep things simple, look for sort of two mil carp pellets. They're the bread and butter of what these fish see and they're good. You can add flavourings to them if you want to, you can add colour to them if you want to. They're a good baseline. And as you can see, I've just got nice two mil pellets in there. Nice and sticky because I've done them in a certain way. The only other bait you could consider putting around the feeder are ground bait. Now, ground bait's a fantastic bait, but for me, it's better in the sort of summer months, really, when the fish are a bit more aggressive and actively feeding because you're looking for cloud up the water and draw a big feeder in response. I think when you're maybe chucking it out and leaving it out there for a long time, pellets are the better option and they're a safe option. No matter where you go, you're going to be able to grab a bag of pellets and you're going to catch fish with them. So it's a great starting point. Now, if you're worried about soaking the pellets and getting it wrong, my best advice would be to get one of the bags. You can buy them now in a tackle shop, ready done pellets. They're pellets that are already soaked. You'll see them, they're ready to go. You can literally just pour them into a bait tub and away you go. They're a great option, especially if you're a newcomer to the spot and you're a bit concerned about how to do them. But as you get more experience with this method, you're probably gonna to wanna to do them yourself. And like I say, it's super simple. All you need to do is get that Tupperware tub. Like I said, level fill them with pellets, level fill it with water and you're good to go. It'll be perfect the next day. So that's all we need for the feed. Two mil pellets, you can't go wrong, and the carp love them. Actually, loading the feeder up is a crucial part of this style of fishing. If you do this right, you're gonna get bites. If you don't do it right, you're just not gonna catch. But it is simple, luckily enough. Now, if you use the Guru version of this feeder, they don't come with a mold, or you cannot get a mold for them. But if you use the Preston one, they come with a mold. Now, it's personal preference whether you use a mold or not. They're easy enough to load by hand. I personally like to use a mold to ensure that I get a consistent result. But like I say, it isn't essential. These feeders are very easy to load and I'm gonna show you the two different ways that you can do it, either both by hand or with the mold. Now, firstly with the mold. Now, what you wanna do is put a little bit of bait in the mold first, so just a small amount. That's obviously gonna be at the top of the feeder. Then pop your hook bait in there so it wants to be right in the middle of that mold. Sort of grab the feeder in this hand so it's keeping it nice and out of the way and then put a second helping of pellets on that in that mold now what you're looking to do is sort of level fill it if anything a slightly heaped fill and press that feeder nice and firmly you can't really press it on too hard nice and firm give it a really good squeeze then these molds come with like a button on the bottom just press that and out she comes a nicely loaded banjo feeder I can't put it on as good as that by hand, but some people will prefer to do it by hand. Maybe they don't want to buy a mold. So let's just show you the opposite way. But for me, I'll chuck that out and I know I'm going to catch a fish with it. But if you want to do it by hand, it's the same sort of process really. But the only thing I will say about the, doing it by hand is, it gives you a, a few more options in terms of loading it. You can obviously squeeze it on a bit harder, you can squeeze it on less, etc. So. What I would like to do, if I'm going to do it by hand, I like to put a decent layer in first. So I'll put like a firmish layer in, in the bottom. So I press that in nice and firm. Especially in winter, this bit can be really hard if you want it to, because we're going to be chucking it out and leaving it for 20, 30 minutes for a bite. So having a, a nice firm base layer isn't a bad thing. So there we go, we've got a nice firm base layer. Now the second one, we just want to pick up like a, enough pellets to cover your palm. Then we're going to lay that hook bait in the middle of that sort of palm full of, of uh, pellets there and then we're just going to gather it up and press it that feeder onto them pellets and then sort of with your palm go around the feeder and use your thumb and we're sort of just squeezing it and firming it all into the frame of that feeder now that's a lovely skinny loading a lot less bait than what i, I would have done with the with the uh, mold but that is a lovely presented bait and for me like I say, I like to use the, the mold, but you can do it by hand. That's the beauty of these feeders, they're so easy to use. So let's get this out in the pond and let's see if we can't get towed in with a great big Boddington carp. Now, one thing we need to discuss before we cast this lovely feeder out is where to fish. Now that is dictated by the venue style. Now here it's a massive reservoir and the fish are naturally gonna be pushed away from our fishing position. So they're gonna be certainly 30 meters and further out. And then as it gets colder, they're gonna push away from the bank a bit more as well. So unfortunately on a venue like this, we've got to go quite long to get to the fish. However, your mileage might vary. If you go to a smaller commercial, the fish are not gonna be a million miles away from you. You might have to just chuck 20 meters up to an island or in a little bay or something like that. So it's very much venue dependent where you wanna be casting. 
What I would say though is if you fish a venue with features in it, islands, big long margins, that kind of thing, check them out with a feeder. The good thing about this is you can make one cast and if there's a fish there, you tend to catch it. So it's not something where you have to build up and build up. So it's worth exploring with the feeder different areas of your swim. So if you've got an island, maybe chuck one close to the island, as close as you can get it. If you've got a long, like I say, a long margin with some reeds, reed cover, or maybe an overhanging tree, maybe give it a chuck there. Or if you've got a decent body of open water, maybe chuck it there. What I'm saying is you can use this to search the swim. Today, because this is a big open water, I've chucked out there at 50 meters and I've caught a fish first cast in. However, I've chucked back to that spot at 50 meters and there's no more fish. So I can naturally assume that the fish have backed off. So I've just taken the line off my line clip and I've added another 10 meters on. So I'm gonna go out to 60 meters now, which is a long cast granted, but on a venue like this, you kind of have to go to the fish. They're not gonna to come to you. So that would be my uh, biggest bit of advice when it comes to where to fish, especially in the winter. Use a nice small feeder. Don't be afraid to search the swim in front of you. Use it, use it wisely. You know, maybe have 20 minutes up against the island. If you don't get a sign, maybe chuck it into open water for 20 minutes. Something like this lends itself to searching the swim. So don't be afraid to search out those different spots within your swim. And I'm going to get this out to that new spot at 60 meters. Let's see if we can get another Boddington beast. Now the hardware that you use to actually get that feeder out to where you need it to get to is venue dependent. If you're on a smaller commercial, you can probably get away with a nine foot or a 10 foot rod, a nice soft through action rod. However, on a big venue like this, I've got to chuck it a decent way. So I'm going to want to use feeder rods like 12 foot, maybe even 13 foot, something that gives me the power to get that feeder out there. Now onto the reel again, you just need to balance that up with your rod. Just your standard sort of three, 4,000 size reel is perfect for those 10 foot rods. However, on this sort of big venue, you are going to need to step up real size. What you load it with, though, is important. And I've got five pound detection on here with a shock leader. But if I was just going on a normal commercial and using a 10 foot rod, I'd probably use six pound detection, maybe even eight pound detection just straight through. What you're looking for is a nice, strong, robust line. You've got to remember that even though the water's cold, we're still fishing for carp of all sizes. They fight hard. We're putting the tackle under a lot of pressure, even in winter. So we don't want to refine things too much. Six or eight pound line on your normal commercials is perfect. You don't need to drop the size any more than that. It's pointless. It's only going to end in tears. The only reason I've got five pound on here is because that thinner diameter allow me to cast greater distances a bit easier. New fish detection is a strong durable line which is exactly what you want. It's got low stretch too which I believe makes casting a bit easier, a bit smoother and then when you do hit that clip you can lay that feeder onto the surface in a nice controlled way because of the low stretch. So if you haven't checked it out already check detection out for a real line it's fantastic but that is the hardware that you need. Balance the rod and reel for the situation. If you're on smaller commercials, nine and 10 foot rods and the, and the appropriate reel is fine. But on these bigger waters, you are gonna need to step up the, the rod length and the reel size to ensure that you can get that feeder out to where the fish are. There we go. Now that feed has been in for 20 minutes. And then we've had an absolute rip snorter of a bite. Now that was on that new mark of 60 meters. And it just shows you how you can cast this feeder set up around and pick fish off. And like I say, that's just one of the anomalies of this place, you've maybe got to go further and further because of the nature of the venue being so big and, and uh, just such a big expanse of water. But on a smaller venue, it could be that you've got to just chuck to new areas of your swim. And that's, like I said, that's the beauty of this tactic. You can just, it's quite non-destructive. You can just chuck it to new areas of your swim and pick fish off. It's great fishing here at Boddington because you're fishing for specimen fish. You know, these are about as big as it gets when it comes to using match fishing tackle. And when you've been, you've done everything right, you've made your feeder, you know, you've got a nice bright up bait on there. You've, you've managed to get your feeder to go into the water really nice and quietly. To then get a reward of a fish is, is just fantastic. 
It never ceases to amaze me that you even get a bite. The, the lake's that big. It just amazes me you even get a bite, but it's such a good winter water. There's just a good head of fish in here that are not easy to catch, but they're, they're quite willing. And you could maybe come here pleasure fishing and catch, you know, certainly two or three fish on most sessions. And when they're like that first one, and hopefully whatever this one is, it feels good again. You know, it's, it's just a good place to come in the winter and get yourself a couple of bites off these big beasty fish. Just got to be a bit careful because there's all rocks in the edge. It is a reservoir and it's the, the, the bank here is all like big boulders and stuff. So you've got to be a touch careful when you get them in close. Obviously we don't want to have any uh, issues. I can just feel the fish is sort of quite close in now, which is good. Hopefully he's another good fish. Take your time with them, you know, they're big fish, like I say that. You could realistically catch a 20 pound fish. I mean, we already have had one today that'll be close. I mean, that's it's another double figure fish. So we want to take our time with them. And you've, you've worked hard to get this fish. So we want to enjoy it. Ooh. So I've put a pink wafter on that time and it's gone round on the pink. So the bright hook bait has done the job. Cracking. Lovely. So let's get him on the mat and have a little look. So there we go, fish number two on that new spot at 60 meters. Not as big as the first one, but getting up towards double figures, probably nine, 10 pound. Let's slip him back. This one was caught on the pink, so we'll chuck that out again. We'll get into a new spot and see if we can catch another one. But yeah, absolute cracker. Well chuffed with that one. Gave a good account of itself and just proved how effective this tactic is at this time of year. Once you've threaded the feeder onto the line and terminated your rig, you need a hook length to put on it. Now I stick to four inches. I just think it's a good all round size. It works for most species and most types of fishing. So stick to four inch. So if you go into the tackle shop and you're looking for a hook length to put on your hybrid feeder, look for something of around four inches. Go for something nice and strong, 022, which will be about eight pound with a size 12 or 10 hook, depending on the size of fish that you're gonna target. And it's gonna work really well for you. Now it can be a little bit confusing when you walk into the tackle shop, when you look for and find those four inch hook clems, there'll be different gizmos on the end of the hair to put baits on in different ways. To keep things simple, you want a bayonet for, for wafters and then you want a band for trying pellets. The bayonet can be pushed into those wafters and it's a lovely secure way to keep that bait on. So if you buy a packet with some bands and a packet with some bayonets, you ain't gonna go far wrong. The key is matching the hook size and the line diameter for the size of fish you're expecting to catch. Here today, for example, I'm looking at big fish, eight pound and above, so I want strong line. So I've got 0.23 line, which is about eight pound. However, if I was going to somewhere more, a smaller commercial where you're targeting F1s and smaller carp, I may want to use something like a size 16 hook and the line will come down with that, maybe 016, 018. So just bear that in mind. If you are targeting F1s and smaller cat, you probably don't want to be using a size 10 hook. You want to be using something like a 16. However, for these big fish, you definitely want to be on something like a 10 or a 12. Okay, so let's get loaded up and get the feeder back out there. Now the wind's got up in my face and I'm gonna, I've just actually put on, I've took the 45 gram feeder off and I put a 60 gram feeder off. Now, that's quite extreme. This is a big water and there's a big wind in my face. So I've got to use the weight to my advantage to help me get that feeder out there. Make it easy for yourself. Normally I'm a big advocate for using the lightest feeder possible, but we've got to make things easy for ourselves. And today that means using a heavier feeder to get to the mark. So don't be frightened of using different weights. It may be, it's all relative. So on a commercial, you might usually use a 20 gram feeder, maybe up it to 30 grams if you can't hit your mark. Likewise today, we started on 45, which is the size that I kind of want to use. But because the wind's got up, I'll never hesitate to put a heavier feeder on to help me get to that mark, because it's so important. When we cast out, you'll see in a minute, we want to hit the clip with the rod in the air, so we've clipped up, hit the clip, and then as the, you sort of feel the feeder hit the clip, you sort of follow it in with your rod and cushion it into the water. If you just let that feeder free fall into the water, I'm not saying you're not going to catch any fish, but it'll definitely impact your chances, because we're trying to get that feeder to the bottom as intact as we can. So I actually caught that last fish on the feeder that I molded by hand. So I'm going to do that again. So 
I'm going to show you my technique. Now I'm chucking a long way, so this is obviously going to be um, exaggerated because we're chucking a long way out. But the, 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 the this technique remains the same. At the top, at the when the feeder, you can see it almost reaching its target. Lift the rod up, feel that feeder hit the clip, and then try and follow it in as, as gently as you can. You're trying to like lay that feeder onto the water, if that makes sense. Now we're fishing, like I say, a long way out today, so it's exaggerated, but technique remains the same so I've got a fire bank marker there I'm just going to bring it behind me and I'm going to whack it out bring the rod up cushion it down beautiful so I've brought that rod up I felt it and it's gone down lovely and I've put that feeder down perfect now what we're going to put on the hook well to be honest with you the sky's the limit you can put all sorts of things on you can put maggots on meat on pellets on boilies on you name it you can put it on but I think for simplicity, wafters are your best friend. They come in a huge range of colours, a huge range of sizes, and better still, they work great. When it comes to choosing the correct size, you want to match it up with the type of fish that you're targeting. If you're fishing for F1s and smaller carp, pick the smaller sizes, 4mm and 6mm. But if you're here on a venue like I am today and I'm fishing for fish that are sort of 8 eight pound and above then i'm using big hooks and i need my wafter to sort of correspond with that hook size so i'm using eight and ten mil wafters so just match the size up with the expected fish that you're going to catch now when it comes to colors it's a personal preference what you pick underwater footage shows us that pink works really well but i've caught loads of fish on oranges and i've caught loads of fish on whites as well so it's really up to you to find out a color that works for you but as a general guide, when the water's coloured like it is here today, I like to go for the fluoro option. So something like this, a nice fluoro orange, fluoro pink, something like that. But when the water's clear, like often is the case in the depths of winter, when it goes really clear, then the more subdued sort of colours can work really well. They do versions like washed out colours, something like a washed out yellow or washed out pink, or even something like a white can work really well. Colours do make a difference, but I think fundamentally you've got to be confident with what you've got on the end. And if you use one of these, you're gonna catch fish. Like I say, the biggest thing is matching the size to the size of fish you're expecting. Smaller ones for the F1s, bigger ones for the carp, simple as that. A quick note about feeder size. And once again, this is venue dependent. These go from, these are the large ones, the medium ones, and then there's even a small little diddy one. And it's all relative to the venue you're going to fish. So in the depths of winter, when you're maybe targeting smaller carp, F1s, you might want to try it a little small. Just a little thumbnail of bait that you can chuck nice and accurate into a swim and nick a bite. The medium is probably the go-to size for most anglers. It just delivers a nice little payload. It's nice and aerodynamic, so you can cast it nice and easy. It's just a lovely, lovely feeder. Whether it's this venue or a normal sort of size commercial, that will get you a bite throughout the winter no problem at all and that brings us nicely onto the large now when am i going to use the large now this might surprise you but when it's hard and we're chucking out and leaving it out there for a long time the large is my favorite size the reason is it's a good palm full of bait that's gonna i can chuck it out there leave it out there for 40 45 minutes maybe even an hour and i can be relatively confident that even after that amount of time there's still some bait around that feeder if i was to chuck out one of them or one of the tiny ones and leave it out there for that long roach or whatever tow could just drift all that bait away i just believe that the bigger one just means that i'm fishing for a little bit longer you know i can leave it out there safe in the noise that there's going to be some bait around that feeder so i think that's really important the more often you're going to cast the smaller the feeder needs to be so if you're getting 10 minute bites maybe drop the feeder size to a to a medium or even a small if like today you're leaving the feeder in for a long time waiting for bites Get on the large, it delivers that nice payload of bait that is perfect when you're sitting and waiting. It's taken a while, but we've got another one. And it's all sort of worked together today. We've worked our way out, and we've got out to that sort of 60 meter mark, and we've had some cracking fish. And we just had a phenomenal downpour, which I'm quite glad that it's over and done with. But I'm going to make this my last fish because I've just got my gear nicely sort of dried out and I don't want to get soaked again or caught in that rain again. Well, this one's fell to a, an orange, I believe, if I remember rightly what I put on. Maybe even a yellow, I can't remember. 
but it seems like those bright colours have been, as predicted, very good today. But it's been, you know, it's been that day for exploring new areas of the swim, like it so often is at this time of year. You, you know, you're often chucking it into new areas. And that's the beauty of this method. You're presenting that lovely little pile of bait just in an area where the fish have either backed off to or maybe holding up in little shoals, because they often shoal up at this time of year. And it's important to go and find them because it's not that often that they'll come, come to you. So let's get this one out. Is it a common? Yeah, a big long common to end on. They often fight harder, don't they, than the big, big mirrors. These are often the ones that give you a right good tussle. Oh yeah, there's a cracker to end on. Lovely. Oh, cracking. How's that for a bit of autumn action? Right, let's get him on the mat and we'll show you him a bit closer. Okay, so final fish for this little session. Absolutely another cracker, double figure fish. And uh, it just goes to show you the effectiveness of that feeder tactic at this time of year. Absolutely beautiful fish. Cast around the swim, search the areas for the action, and you'll get plenty of bites, even when it's freezing cold. So let's get this one slipped back. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you again on the next video.